This is coming from Curly Sue over there. But I, <laughs> Curly Sue is just fine. Mm, like Curly Sue is white. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Curly Sue is just fine. I've been here almost 30 years. So, been a lot of change since I've been here. So, it's nothing. Not a lot of bad things, but most of it's good. Since I've been here, I came here with a young woman. I was uh, 26 years old, and now I'm 55 years old. So a lot of happened <laughs> since I've been here. You always feel like, you know, they don't treat you well like this. Um, I've never been like in a situation like I've been treated because the color of my skin. You know, some people, some of my co-workers, you know, they did. And sometimes if I feel like I'm not being treated fairly, I will bring the subject and I say to them, listen, this is, this is me. You know, I'm black. And I'll be black with day, until the day I die. Or take it or leave it. You know, um, I'm an intelligent woman. I have a degree. I graduate from schools and... Uh, if uh, I know it, I know it. If I don't, I don't. But don't judge me because I'm black. You think like, you know, I'm not smart enough or I live on welfare. I always work since I've been in this country. I didn't ask any help from the government, you know. So don't, you know, misjudge me because of the color of my kid. You know, some places you have to conduct yourself like in general, you have to connect yourself as a respect, you know, young lady. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. Black, white, Asian, you know, you should start to respect yourself, be presentable, be respectful to other people, you know. So, like, um, as I say, when, you know, when you have that basic uh, education or the way you were raised, you know, the way to conduct yourself. Explain to them. But nowadays, you know, things are a little different, especially for the young woman. So you have to be always aware where you are, who you're talking to, what kind of person, you know, you're talking to, because a lot of people are too fast to to judge or, you know, put you in the same cut, a cut or say, or like, oh yeah, she's young, you know, she's black, so that's mean, you know, she have no, no manner, no education or, you know, will have to disrespect her or she's a young black woman. No, you have to conduct yourself any way you are, you know, any manner you have, you have to conduct it a certain way. I told you, don't be on that. I'm ugly. Delete that. I just woke up. This is my grade. I don't care. It's my grade. She's going to ruin my GPA. My. <laughs> um, there was a point where I definitely didn't like myself at all. I wanted to be something completely different. Not necessarily white, but I wanted to be lighter. I wanted to have curly hair. I wanted to be like J-Lo, like Puerto Rican. I thought that I would fit in more, you know, I wouldn't be as dark. Felt like I would be prettier. Boys would like me. So growing up, I didn't think I was pretty. I didn't think I was attractive because I was a dark-skinned girl. If I have kids, I want them to be raised in a diverse neighborhood. Um, whether it's a town or whether it's in the city, I prefer it to be diverse. That way they get different tastes of different cultures and, di and different ethnicities and they get to see people that look like them and they get to see people that don't look like them. I want them to really experience that and see what that's like. Because we all, for the most part, know that the media has very like Eurocentric views on beauty and how a woman should look and how her body should be. It's like, it's a trend. It changes over time and sometimes it repeats itself. So always be you, always love yourself. And, you know, just come to enjoy like who you are, enjoy figuring yourself out, enjoy like looking at the kinks of your hair and why they curl that way. Enjoy the melanin in your skin and 
why it's that deep and rich. Enjoy everything about yourself and don't let anybody tell you that you're not good enough. Hey, that is a dark night. I didn't change it. I didn't put that number in or put that time. It was God. God did it. My experience as a black man in the United States is kind of different from the majority of the experiences that people have living in this country. By the time I was nine years old, we had lived in Sweden, we had lived in France, we have lived in Africa again, and then finally we landed in the United States. Um, my father and mother taught me to look at people for who they are, to respect people for who they are, and basically to ignore the color of their skin and just to deal with them as fellow human beings. What you find is it's really difficult to be racial in a city like New York. The truth is, if you walk two steps in one direction, you're in a different borough, than you're in a different setting than your own setting. You know, so it doesn't make sense in New York City to be racial because, you know, the group that's right behind you, in front of you, to the left of you, to the right of you, are different from you. Um, I sort of think that I'm pretty. Well, because I don't really think that I'm not really, really pretty, but some people do think that I'm pretty. But, yeah, 